So unlike parabolas, ellipses are a little more uniform, meaning that there's that table that we had, which had four rows before. This is really the only information you need for ellipses. There's really just one row on the table right here. The only difference is uh, if A is bigger than B, your ellipse is going to be wide. If B is bigger, your ellipse is going to be tall. That's the only difference right there. And depending on which one you have, uh, down here we have the, I guess you could say there's two rows. You either have a wide ellipse or a tall ellipse. The only real difference is if A is bigger than B, you got the wide. If A is less than B, you got the tall. The foci are really what change. So if you look, the foci go from being next to each other to being one above the other. So those are the real differences right there. Maybe I'll highlight that in orange. So the foci are really what change here. So that's what the main, really the only difference is here. And it comes from this inequality right here, which I'll make orange instead. Those inequalities determine which of the two situations you have. All right, so our first example. So I'm going to give you properties of the ellipse, and then you're going to tell me where it comes from, uh, like what equation it has, and then the graph. equation and graph the ellipse with focus so in my notes I only have one focus written down that might be a problem uh, I'll leave room in case I need to write the other focus and a vertex at negative four, zero. So let's go ahead and draw this out. <clears throat> so we have a focus at three, zero. I'm going to label this with a little f. Uh, vertex negative four, zero. Label that with a v. I think I need to write down the other focus as well, I'm pretty sure. So the other focus will be minus three zero. And I think I was using purple before for the actual uh, points on the parabola, so I'll use purple for the actual points on the ellipse. So. The black markings are, the foci are not points on the ellipse. Those are used to create the ellipse, but they're not actually points on the ellipse. All right, so let's try to uh, figure out other parts of this graph. There will be another vertex. Where's it going to be? It'll be positive four, zero. So it's going to be right out here. So there's another vertex. I can actually, if I'm very careful, figure out the distance, the sum of the distances away from the two points. So if you remember the definition of a parabola, I'm going to scroll to that real fast. Set of all points, the sum of whose distances from the two foci is constant. So I know about two points. Let's figure out the sum of their distances to the foci. So let's look at the left vertex. So one of the distances is one. And what is the other distance to the other foci? Seven. It should be seven. So the sum of the distances is eight. So 
So we could use this information to figure out there's definitely going to be the minor vertices somewhere on the positive and negative y-axis. So there's going to be the smaller vertices up there. Uh, the only thing I know is the coordinates that will look like y0 and negative y0, and I could solve for y if I use the sum of the two distances. We can use a little geometric intuition. No matter where this vertex is, it's going to be the same distance to the two foci, just because it's halfway in between. It's on the y-axis. So wherever it is, it's going to be four away from the other two foci. So it'll be somewhere over here. So that should be a four and a four. So wherever that puts us on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and figure this point out using the two distances needing to be four right here. Four equals distance from y zero to three zero. Oops. Oop, that should be zero y, not y zero. Wow. Zero y and zero negative y. So we have 3 minus 0 squared plus 0 minus y squared. So 9 minus y squared equals 4, square both sides. 16 equals 9 minus y squared. Uh-oh, this is not good. What did I do wrong? Yep, when you square your negative, you make sure you add it. Now I could subtract. 16 minus 9 is 7 plus y squared, so y is plus or minus square root 7. So where exactly is square root 7? It uh, should be a little smaller than 3, because square root 9 would be 3. So I'll draw it right about, oops, right about there, a little smaller than three. And so our ellipse is going to be drawn like this. All right, so any geometry questions getting the other two vert uh, vertices? So let's go ahead and use that uh, table we have above. So we have the first situation here. And so for the final exam, I will give you this, this table as well. So you'll have these two rows. Uh, so let's write down, I know my ma major vertices. I also know my minor vertices, but let's ignore that for now. Let's just use major vertices and the foci and see if we can figure out B a different way. So our major vertices minus A0 and A0, which in our case were uh, negative 4, 0 and 4, 0. The other part were the foci. So the foci should be negative c0 and c0, which of course was negative 3, 0, and 3, 0. So I know a and c. a is 4, 
C is 3. How are A, B, and C related? There is a relationship up here. It is the C is the absolute value of A squared minus B squared. So that's how we're going to relate these together. So I'm going to plug in the values we know. 3 squared equals absolute value. 4 squared minus b squared. <clears throat> I also know that a is greater than b. So that is significant as well. Our ellipse is wide, so a is greater than b. If our ellipse was tall, A would be less than B. It would be the opposite inequality. All right, A less than B. I need that fact to deal with the absolute value. So if A is less than B, what I just underlined is smaller. So if I subtract those two, will I get positive or negative? I get negative. So the first term smaller, second term will be bigger. So I'll get negative. So if I want to deal with the absolute value, if I get rid of them, I would get negative. So the way to deal with that, there should be a negative out front. Oh, wow. A is bigger than B, which means when I subtract them, A squared is going to be bigger than B squared, so I get positive. So exactly the opposite that I said. So we can just basically erase the absolute value, because we know the first term is going to be bigger. Uh, now I can solve for b squared, just regular algebra. 9 equals 16 minus b squared. I'll subtract the 16 over. It's negative 7. Negative b equals negative b squared. So 7 is b squared, and b is plus or minus square root 7. And you're always going to go for the positives here for a, b, and c. <clears throat> so b is going to be square root 7. And that lets me get the minor vertices. Zero negative b and zero regular b. So we just redid the work that I did previously. The only difference is before I use the definition to get these two minor vertices. So what we did up here in the green is we use the definition. I went all the way to the definition of a ellipse and then went through and figured out what they are. And what we just did was used a shortcut. We used that table instead and got the exact same information. Oh, that's a good question. So we'll look for that. Basically, we're going to have a shift H and K. Okay. So it'll be, be very similar. All right, so we're going to do a few more problems centered at the origin, then we'll shift it over. So I have my graph. I didn't write out the equation. It's very easy to write the equation if you have that chart. The equation is always x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. We got A, we got B. So it's x over 4 squared plus y over square root 7 squared equals 1. So there's our equation. And we got the graph above. We had the graph really early on. So there's the equation. So now we'll do a inverse problem where we'll start with the equation and then I want a uh, written down all the vertices, major and minor, the foci and graph. So we'll start with an equation, write down all the properties and graph it out.
So major vertices, minor vertices, foci, and then graph. So I have the form on the board in the upper right corner. A is not 25. It's almost 25, but not quite. Five. So it would be the square root. So <clears throat> the way it's written, it's x over a whole thing squared. So what you're looking at in our equation is a squared. So regular a is 5. And what about b? b is 3. Now, in this case, a is greater than b. So that means it's going to be a wide ellipse. So it's going to be a wide ellipse when we graph it. That means your foci are going to be horizontally spaced, not vertically spaced. So a was bigger. So this is the shape of our ellipse. So I'm going to scroll back to the chart, to, to our table, and you can fill in the major, minor vertices and the foci from that chart. So we got this first situation right here. So go ahead and write down all these. I think the first thing to get, C would be the first thing to go for. And that'll let you write down your foci. My equation is wrong. Isn't C squared? Yeah. So there should be a C squared right here. Wow. I think I even used that in the calculations, but never went back and um, corrected it up here. You can save a little ink and use plus minus, because you're going to get two foci, two vertices, two, uh, two other vertices. <coughs> so I'll just write them together with the plus minus. Uh, major vertices are plus minus a, 0. So it's plus minus 5, 0. Minors are plus minus, uh, 0 plus minus b.
So 0 plus minus 3. That should be plenty of information to graph off of that. So you got your foci, your vertices. So any questions on the computations, finding C, or reading off the table? So we're going to do one more example before we start translating and shifting the uh, away from the origin. So one focus will be at 0, 2. And vertices at 0, plus, minus, 3. So from the other two vertices, and the one other focus. So I'll start out with the graph. So one focus is 0, 2. Vertices at 0, plus, minus, 3. So there's our plus 3 vertex, our minus 3 vertex. So from what you know so far about ellipses, where's our other focus going to have to be? Zero, negative two. It'll be zero, negative two. So our other focus, zero, negative two. So before you do anything else, <coughs> we're going to consult the row, uh, the row in the table. We now have a tall ellipse, so we're in row two in the table. So when I scroll up, um, you know the focus and the vertice, so you're going to find the minor vertex, and then that'll lead to the equation. So we have the second row here. Uh, the vertices are labeled, but they're labeled on the left on the axis graph over there. So I'll just write major and minor. So here's the minor vertices. And then the major vertices are the top and bottom. So we know B and we know C. What you have to find now is little a right there. So you have to figure out what is little a. And just to warn you, I think it's going to be a square root. It's not going to be a nice integer. I didn't choose a 3, 4, 5 ellipse like last time. So figure out A, and then that will give you the vertices, the minor vertices.
So on the tall lips, you have to be careful. Your absolute value will be negative without the absolute value. So if I remove the absolute value, I have to also put a negative in front. So on your tall lips, the absolute value would be negative. So A is square root 5. Our other two vertices are going to be plus minus square root 5, 0. Now where's square root 5? It's pretty close to square root 4, so I just drew it a little bit bigger than 2. And then draw your ellipse. I should label square root 5, negative square root 5. All right, last up, equation. x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. x over square root 5 plus y over 3 squared equals 1. So there's our equation. Any questions on this ellipse problem? So the two things that are important is figuring out do you have a tall ellipse or a wide ellipse? And then that tells you uh, how to deal with the absolute value, how to relate A, B, and C together. So we have two more problems to go. So center is not a word I've used on an ellipse before, but it means the point directly in the middle. So it would be between the two foci. One of the focuses is 3, negative 3, and the, other, and the vertex will be at 5, negative 3. <coughs> so let's graph out all these points. So the center is at 2, negative 3. I'll put a C for center. Focus is at 3, negative 3. And a vertex at 5, negative 3. I'll draw that in purple. So the center is going to be between the two foci. So that means my other focus is going to be to the left of C by one unit. So I can write both of the foci. So one of them is one, zero, oh, one negative three. The other one is three negative 3. I'm going to write these in 1 as one point with a plus minus. And the way I do that is 
I know I'm moving one in each direction. So I'm going to actually use the center point and say it's basically the x coordinate of 2, and then move left 1 and right 1. And that will get you both of the foci right there. So both foci you can write in this form down here. So a very useful technique in math to solve problems is make the problem easier and then solve an easy one. So what I'm going to do is shift this to the origin. So I'm going to move it so the center is at the origin. So I'm going to go left 2 and up 3. And then we're going to have an easy problem just like the ones we saw before and at the very end we're going to take our answer and shift it back down to where it should be. So I'm going to make an easy problem where we're going to just shift this to the origin. So when I do this, I'll do the whole, this whole problem in the green marker because it's not the original example. We're going to solve an easier problem and then take the answer to that and make it fit what we're working on here. So my foci are over one in both directions on the x-axis and then where where would my vertex be that was originally over here? Where would that vertex end up? Three. So it should be, yeah, three over from the center. So it should be at three, zero. So there is a vertex. We got the two foci right there. So that means my other vertex is going to be there on the left side. So we've got vertex, vertex. And now I'm ready to write down, uh, let's see, C is going to equal 1. And the vertex is the A coordinate. So A equals 3, and that comes from the Foci are plus minus C zero, and our major vertexes are plus minus A zero. So that's how I got the A and the C right there. So find B. You know A, you know C, find B. And then that will give you where your other two uh, vertexes should be. I know they're on the y-axis, I just got to figure out where they are on the y-axis. So our square root 10, that's not a nice number, but it's really close to square root 9, just a little bigger than square root 9. So a little bigger than 3. And there is our vertex. So the hardest part is probably figuring out what B was. 
generally going to be the most difficult part of these problems. Oh wait, something went wrong. Our vertex is too tall. This shouldn't be a tall vertex. It should be a wide vertex. So I messed up on the signs. So I messed, this is not correct right here. So we have as a wide ellipse. So that means A greater than B. That messes up the absolute value is now positive. So we got regular nine minus B. So that gives us B squared is eight. So we get square root eight. So we subtract nine, get negative eight, and then multiply by negative one. All right. So our vertices plus minus square root eight. So that's a bit smaller than three. So those are gonna come down a tiny bit. So a little smaller than three. All right, so that's a good example of your math spidey sense, that this ellipse should have been whitey, wider, whitey. This ellipse should have been wider uh, than it was tall, and it looked like it was a tiny bit taller than it was wide. So that doesn't make sense. So you go back, and hopefully your mistake's easy enough to spot. All right, this is not the answer to the original question, however. How do we take, oh, I still haven't even written the equation out yet. Let's write the equation out. We have x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. And a is somewhere 3. y over square root 8 squared equals 1. All right. So there is the equation for the ellipse, the easy ellipse. Now what we have to do to get the actual answer for the original problem, we have to move this over two to the right and then down three. So I'm going to write the general equation for an ellipse. So all you do is subtract h from x and then k from y. So it looks a lot like the circle equation. They're just both divided by a and b. That's the only real difference between this and the circle equation. So in our case, h is 2, the horizontal is 2, and k is negative 3. So we have to move 2 to the right and 3 down. So I'm ready to translate this. So we have x minus 2 over 3 squared plus y plus 3 over square root 8 squared equals 1. Be a little careful with the signs. It's always the opposite of what it looks like. I want to shift down so it looks like I add 3. I want to shift to the positive x-axis so I subtract 2. So the signs always look backwards of what they actually are. All right, there's one last question that we'll only partially get into. Actually, I'll leave it till tomorrow. That'll work. So we'll do just one last one tomorrow. It'll involve completing the square, and then you'll take a quiz.